today on Ask This Old House. We are completely overwhelmed with weeds. We just don't even know what to do. Well, to me, this space does not look too big. It just needs to be organized and managed. I'll transform this chaotic patch of weeds into a tranquil secret garden. Yeah, perfect. Every house that has natural gas has one of these. I'll tell you what it is and how it keeps you safe. And I'll show you how to update your cabinets with soft close, hinges, and slides. Full extension, you can reach all the way to the back. Great. Let me try it. Nice. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. For projects around the house, HomeAdvisor helps find local pros to do the work. You can check ratings, read customer reviews, and book appointments with pros online at HomeAdvisor.com. HomeAdvisor is proud to support Ask This Old House. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to Ask This Old House where we love getting your questions because we have got the team to answer them. Good morning everybody. Good morning. Good morning. What are you doing this morning? Well Nathan got us all coffee. Did he? All of us, huh? One, two, three. Ooh, black two sugars. Four. Wow, you have no <laughs> idea how happy that makes me. First of all, you got it right, but second of all, I used to have to get the coffee. That's right. Welcome. That's how you got the job. <laughs> <laughs> so what's everyone working on? Uh, Richard? I'm actually going to talk about gas safety and I'm going to take a regular and cut it in half. Oh. I should probably get started. Cutaway for you. Cutaway. Of surprise, course. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> How about you, Jen? I am working on an overgrown garden. I have to clear out all the weeds so I just can see what I'm working with. Sounds good. All right. And uh, Mr. Silva, you do know that Mr. Silva likes tea, not coffee, right? Did he tell you that? Does he? Yeah, and he likes it without any milk or sugar, by the way. <laughs> I can go fix it for you. No, no that's all right. You got the coffee right. <laughs> uh, what are you working on, Tommy? I just sent in him an email about a small project I want him to go look at. Yeah, oh, all right. So what are you working on? Nathan? The uh, homeowner wants to upgrade the whole kitchen to soft close everything, so I'm going to go take a look. Sounds like a good project. Okay. Thank you. No milk, no sugar. Oh, this is Green cool. would be nice, too. This is perfect. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Wow, the house looks great. Thanks, we moved in about six months ago. We did a lot of work upstairs, but luckily down here, everything was in pretty great shape. Oh, the kitchen looks awesome. Thanks. Um, we did just a few small minor upgrades. We replaced the faucet, added water filtration, all new appliances, and then replaced the cabinet poles. Nice. But one thing that we really wanted to do, but haven't done yet, and didn't even know if it was possible, is upgrade the cabinets to soft close. Well, let me take a look. Back in the day, soft close would have been a little bit more expensive of an option. Mm -hmm. But these look like pretty typical hinges and draw slides. I think it could be a really easy swap. Let me run out to my truck. We'll grab some tools and get started. Great. All right, Amanda. What I want to get started with is our cabinet doors. I went to the home center and I picked up a hinge that's really close to the one you have. It has the inch and a quarter overlay. And see that white piece right there? Yeah. That's actually the piston that controls the slow close. This little lever right here controls the speed. Oh, wow. It's the same mortise that we already have. So let's swap them out. We'll tuck this right into the existing mortise, but as you can see, the holes don't quite line up, so we're going to have to drill some new pilot holes. And it's really important that we keep it nice and square. So we're going to take our combination square, and I'm going to use this nice little tool here. It's a self-centering drill bit. The way it works is, it centers itself right in the hole, and then it punches right through right where the screw is going to go. Oh wow, that's cool. So let's square it up and get drilling. That's it? That's it. Now we just have to do all the hinges in the kitchen. All right.
Okay, it's a little tough to take out, but just wiggle it back and forth and it should pop out. All right, let's see if I got it. All right, here's your new one. Okay. All right, up a little bit more. Next, we're going to work on the draw slides. Now, there are a lot of options when it comes to slides, so there's some things you want to look for. You have side-mounted slides, but they also make under-mounted slides, but for ease, we'll stay with these. Okay. Next is extension. Right now, you have a standard extension, and you don't really get to use the back of your draw. You can only use about three-quarters of it, but what, since we're swapping out for soft clothes, we might as well swap them out for a full extension, and you'll be able to use the full draw. Oh, that'd be great. So what we're going to do is empty all the draws out, strip the slides, and get started. Perfect. It's tricky to keep the slides level in the cabinet, so I'm going to use this jig to hold everything in place. This plastic socket screws to the rear of the cabinet to hold the slides in place. Then, I can screw into the face frame to hold the front of the slide. Now, I can reconnect the slides. All right, Amanda, you're all set. Give them a try. Okay. That's wonderful. Nice and smooth. All right, let me test this drawer out. Full extension, you can reach all the way to the back. Great, let me try it. Nice. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Nice job, Nathan. Thank you. So I imagine with a job like this, it really helps to find the right hardware, the best replacement for what you're taking out, speeds things up. It really does. You want to get the right hardware. You want to make sure that your hardware fits right into that mortise. Right. But the hardest part about this job was how many there was. 24, uh, 24 doors, 12 draws. So we're talking 48 individual hinges and 24 individual slides. And it adds up quick. So in terms of cost, what do you think? This could be $1,000 to $1,500 just in materials. So that's probably news to a lot of people that they could spend almost $1,500 on something like that. Cheaper options out there? There are. There are, there are a couple. Type like this is just a single piston. You can mm. mount it at the top of your frame. So instead of um, being embedded in the hinge, just put it on the frame and let the door close against that. But there's no adjustment with that. Right. So you're, you know, if you you got to find out where to put it across the top to match with your hinges. Gotcha. But they do sell another alternative that you can mount onto your hinge, and it has a dampener built into it that you can actually add some adjustment. But that's very specific to the brand and make of your hinges. Yeah, okay, well, good to know it's out there. Yeah. I know you install a lot of kitchens, um, and every kitchen guy loves their jigs. Yeah. There's a bunch of them. I saw you use something like this. Uh, would you recommend a homeowner who's probably only gonna do this once in their life, go Absolutely. for a jig? Absolutely, it's only about 25 or $30. This you know, one? Yep, you can buy it almost anywhere. Nice. Comes in a set of two, and when you're doing the insides of your cabinets, when you're putting those slides all the way to the rear, those come in real handy because you can't get inside the cabinet and work right in front of you. I mean, oftentimes you're working by yourself, so the extra set of hands makes a ton of sense, but also the repeatability. Yep. I mean, one here, one there, one here, one all the way through, so the jig makes a lot of sense. It'll pay for itself. Beautiful. All right, and uh, I noticed that you like this. What did you call this again? A socket. A socket, because you know earlier you would have maybe have padded it out, built it out here in the back. Yep. You like the socket. I like it. If you have a cleat across the back that you can get good screwing, then you just attach this to the back of your slide, put it on top of your jig, and just screw it to the rear. The only problem is that is the depth of it. It's about an inch and a half, and you need to make sure that in the back of your cabinet you have that depth to put those in. Make sure the drawer doesn't come back too far and hit this. Absolutely. You wouldn't get a full close on it. Absolutely. Got it. Yeah, well, good tip and nice project. Thank you. Well done.
Home inspectors from all across the country often send us their scariest finds, and some of them are pretty scary. So we've asked our guys to pick their favorites and see what we come up with. Tommy, did you pick one? Yeah, I did. So look at this. This is a deck. This is, great. This is from an inspector in Alaska. His name is Jim, and he sent this picture. Now, first of all, you got to look at this deck. It's pretty level. All right? But look at how he held this up. I mean, you've got a couple of smart engineering points right here. That beam right there is supposed to be plumb. It's at an angle. But look at how he supported the columns. He saved some money right there. <laughs> he look saved some money. Right? didn't have to read bucks. Them. They're about two feet away from the outside. But he's got a beam running up on an angle. But he now sistered another diagonal to it. So he engineered that post. Now he made a half of a scissor trust out of it. Yes. So do you trust that? Do you trust that? I, I trust it, but look at the lateral movement. That's not going anywhere. Go wrong with that. I think it's been there for a while. And look at the grill, perfectly level. Yeah. I mean, what I else do you need? Impressed. Lucky thing it doesn't snow in Alaska. I, mean, it, I think he gets some paint on that, he can get another 10 years. Well, I'm going to show you guys something a little bit more. Funny. Look at oh that. Right. my! Is that this, was a, this was a combined project between you two. You two is an Silva. Yeah. yeah, this is the front. This is the front of the house. Now this bed. this is code compliant, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah right. right. It's like a little Tommy step. <laughs> I was gonna ask. Oh, that did you hurt. ship that, that out? Hurt. Did you ship that out? This one comes from Cleveland. Oh, I love oh this, one. this combines two of my yeah. great loves: pipe fitting and wine. Yeah. This is a cork. It's a cork. Yeah. This is a cork. Yeah. What? Right. A cork. In a steam pipe. That's a wine right. cork. Right. As they say in pipe fitting, any port in a storm. Oh. <laughs> I've heard that before as well. I, I yeah. Was it a good year? Very good year. I would just uncork that right there. Let it just. Let it just. Dump in. But Why not? Kind of fun. So if you're a home inspector or a homeowner and you've got your own submission you want to send in, we'd love to hear from you. Unbelievable. Absolutely. <laughs> Richard, natural gas, which feeds many of our appliances in the house, comes under the plumber's purview. Sure. Um, and over the years, we've always heard of isolated incidences where there's been a fire or an explosion, yeah. but they haven't isolated. As you know, recently in Massachusetts, we had a much bigger, much more catastrophic event. It was a big deal. In the town of Lawrence, 80 houses within a two-hour period caught on fire. And and not an isolated incident, and, and it became clear quickly that it was basically a utility-wide right, problem. Right. And I think for the first time, a lot of us started thinking, at least here in this right. state, was like, I don't even think I understand my natural right. gas system. So it really invites us to take a little conversation about the whole gas infrastructure and safety on gas in this country. Gas comes to us, it's a big country, and it comes th from distant places through high pressure lines. And in order to have enough volume to get through these lines, they have to pump it up. And so it could be extraordinary pressures to get it to localized distribution stations. Uh, it, it, help me though, how far is it coming? Where does Massachusetts, for example, get its natural gas? Some of it gas? comes from Canada to New England, others from Ohio. That could be thousands of miles. Via pipe? Right, for <laughs> millions of people getting it off of one pipe. So it means the pressures have to be extraordinary. Uh -huh. That gets it locally. Now, what do you got to do? Now it's a big game to chase it down to get it to lower pressures, lower pressures, lower pressures. So there's a series of pressure regulators regionally located all around to take high pressure, turn it to lower, to lower, to lower, to lower, to lower. We only pressurize it to move it. We don't need it at a high pressure when That's it right. finally gets to That's our right. house. So this is a standard regulator right here. You know, if you look at uh, the standard gas fit at anybody's house, this is an outside meter. You can see the supply right here. There's a shutoff valve there. And there's the regulator, and that's going to step down the pressure. Here's the meter bar, and there's the gas meter right there. That pipe right there going to the house is much smaller now that you put it in context that's of the right. big ones that would go cross that's country. Right. What's interesting is the, the type of pressures that we need for safe gas operation in the house is way less than a pound of pressure, PSI. So it's a tiny amount, hmm. okay? So this is what a regulator looks like inside. And so you'd have a pressure coming in here. This could be from the utility at a pound of pressure or less. And then at this side is what goes into the building. And we might be looking for a tenth of a pound. That little? Very little. So now, if this pressure changed a lot over here or this, this diaphragm would just constantly adjust up and down, up and down. Now watch, if too much came in, look what happened. See this piston down here? Oh, yeah. It would shut off the supply. Okay. So this thing just constantly dances back and forth, back and forth. But if we know our appliances only need, let's say, a tenth of a pound, as you say, why isn't there just a, a tenth of a pound hole on this side? It just keeps it like that. Like, why is this jiggling up and down? Because you have neighbors <laughs> sharing the same... <laughs> What's that Because you're sharing the same pipe. So they're taking, they're taking gas off that line, oh. so the pressure is changing. So it's so constantly we... just changing its pressure. And so it's going to give you a relatively close setting here, but we constantly have to fine-tune it. So there's a regulator here for the main house. 
on many appliances. There's individual regulators as well. So it's actually a pretty smart device. It's a brilliant device and it works well. But what happened then? Because 80 houses went up in flames. Well, I think the system got overpressurized for some reason. So instead of seeing one pound pressure, we don't know how much came in here. But whatever but it's came in. It's designed to regulate pressure. It is, Kevin, but not, not, it can't take that kind of extraordinary pressure because right. it's got nothing but this little diaphragm right here. And that would have blown through. And then, then houses would have had too much gas. And then if this one called for a water heater, that one would have had a fire because right. you needed the spark. And so that's when the gas started flowing through and it was just running into the houses and the explosions happened. That's right. But it was an anomaly, right? Because, I mean, as terrible as this event was, there are still millions of people Absolutely. receiving millions of pounds. Absolutely. gas every day. Absolutely. It's, it's a, generally, it's an incredibly safe system of distribution. Right. But we should be thinking about gas safety because even isolated events can be dangerous. That's right. And if I have somebody complain that they have a little smell of gas, you know, people don't realize that they add a thing to gas called mercaptan so you'll smell it because it's normally odorless. Huh. And if you smell gas, get out of the house and call the pro. Get out, 911, that's, and that's deal right. with it later. That's right. right. Although in Lawrence, um, they were so overwhelmed, yeah. so many people were in trouble that the utility actually advised, if you can, turn off your gas, which I wouldn't know how to it's do. It's the one and only time that I'll share with people how to shut the gas off. So in that same gas fit that we see outside or inside the house, there's a meter bar, and there's always a shut off generally on the left-hand side. And you gotta make sure that you turn this yep. so that this is perpendicular to flow, not in line and with the flow. And shut it off to the right. house. And then get out. All right, well good information. Fascinating to understand how all this works. Yeah. Thank you. Hey Jen, welcome to our yard. This is absolutely gorgeous, it's humongous. It is so big, it's great. The girls love it, uh, my dog loves it, the chickens love it. Um, but as you know, with a big yard like this um, come some big problems and certainly some big weeds with this nice fertile soil. My husband and I have done some plantings, we've worked on this pond, which we love, but we're just kind of at a loss and it, I feel really overwhelmed. Well, to me, this space does not look too big. It just needs to be organized and managed. Um, I think just looking in here, you have a lot of great pieces. You have the structure of these boulders that are placed everywhere. You have this pond already started. So what I want to do is go through and weed and clear out, get rid of everything we don't want, and then we'll come up with a design. Yes. So let's start with weeding, and then we'll go from there. OK, sounds good. All right, so Jen, let's, we're going to start with clearing this area. We'll okay. start here and work our way back and incrementally see what we find. One weed at a time. Yep. Look at this. That's really cool. Jen, just of covering this grass, I mean, look at the edge of this yeah. boulder. We're going to use that as part of the feature somehow. Awesome. I love it. This grass looks perfect, but it's in the wrong spot. So let's uh, dig out the root ball around it and we'll move it somewhere. All right. You got that? Bring it over to the tarp. Beauty. Awesome. So these daylilies are pretty resilient and they'll transplant well. We could even divide them into two or three, okay? okay. Okay, the weeds are gone. We have a new canvas to work with here. And so what I'm thinking is we're gonna design a secret garden for you. That sounds great. So a secret garden to me is somewhere that you enter a garden, there's destination spots, you could circulate around. You, a kid is gonna use it different than an adult, but it's just a little sanctuary, a place to go. Yeah. So within your garden, I have four access points, all defined by these large boulders. Okay. There are large pathways that help you travel around. As your first destination spot, you have this incredible boulder here. It's flat, it's a great sitting mm -hmm. rock. You can read a book or play cards. Mm -hmm. And around it, I wanna put in low perennials. And then in the back, I wanna put in a witch hazel that blooms early yeah. in the season. Yeah. So the second destination spot, I wanna put in raspberries and blackberries. Oh because you have this great rugged stone wall and I want it to be a, you could access it from both sides, whether you're on the grass or on the inside, and they could just be a big bramble that covers part of the wall and is a great transition to the woodlands. That sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. Last, you have this pond that's already there. What we need to do is clean up the edges so you could access it from all sides. 
Um, I wanted to put in a Japanese maple so it could arch over the edge, maybe protect the fish, give it a little shade. Lovely. And then soften the hardscape around the pond with maybe some succulents or something. Oh, that sounds really good. Let's get to work. All right. We'll start by planting around destination one. These are called Hakone grass. So they'll do well in this light situation Great. and they'll come back every year. They're a perennial. It's a pretty yellow. It's gorgeous. So we're just gonna add a little bit of organic starter fertilizer to give the plants a little kickstart. Tease the roots. You smell good. Yeah. Okay, pick a face, Jenny. Yeah, I like it a little straight. Yeah. Perfect. So this is that day lily that we dug up from the other side of the garden. I'm gonna take it and divide it and place it on the side here. They look a little bit rough, but they'll be fine next year. Let's get those raspberries in over by destination two. And last, we could get working around the pond for destination three. Just nestle those succulents right around the edge of the pond. They all grow between three and six inches, so they're gonna stay nice and low. Okay. Would you like it to face this way or towards the pond? This I, is the more arching side. Yeah, I like it, the idea of it arching over the pond, if that's possible. I'm gonna turn it then. I like that position. Looks good to me. Let's cover everything with a good layer of mulch to help the new plants retain moisture. This should help you keep a lot of those weeds from coming back too. Great job on the watering, Jen. Thank you. Definitely keep up with it in this okay. heat uh, until they're established. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is all these plants that we put in are pretty small and they're going to grow and they're going to get big. But the great thing is you could make it, you could prune them and shape them to fit your space. Okay. All right. Mm. So one last thing, you just got to promise me you'll keep on top of the weeds. Okay. I promise. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything. Take Thanks. care. You too. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.